Welcome, biology. Uh, today we will be covering chapter 29.1. Uh, this is our last section on animals. Uh, we are going to be looking into uh, behavior. Uh, so we first started off talking about what an animal is. Okay, some uh, evolutionary guidelines, adaptations, things like that, body plan. Um, in chapter 26, different phyla. Then we looked into the body systems. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the animal behavior as far as how they're going to use those systems for the most part uh, and be able to behave. Okay, uh, so 29.1, we're going to be looking at the elements of behavior. Um, our objectives identify the significance of uh, behavior in the evolution of a species, uh, explain what an innate behavior is, describe major types of learning, and explain what type of behaviors are usually considered complex. So let's dive in. First part, behavior and evolution. Uh, behavior is the way an organism reacts to stimuli in its environment. So we talked a little bit about a response last chapter, chapter 28, and we talked a little bit about movement and support. Well, now this behavior is going to be a response to that stimulus. Um, so it can also uh, depend on their internal uh, condition. It can be as simple or a complex, as simple as a dog being alert and looking in, in a direction, um, or it can be as complex as uh, others washing their food, animals washing their food before uh, they eat it. You have essential behaviors, those that are which are used for uh, survival, such as finding and catching food, selecting habitats, avoiding predators, and finding mates. Um, so here you have a ram here. These have, this is how they battle for mates. Uh, they clash their, their horns, their prongs, uh, and the winner gets the mate. Here you have an owl, a mouse. I think you understand that one. Uh, so a little bit about this. Behaviors are influenced by the nervous system. Remember, the nervous system is going to receive... Uh, sensory information from the environment and then send out response uh, but it's also genes okay it's also in the DNA as far as um, that is the instincts for the most part and we'll talk a little bit more about that so what is the significance of behavior in the evolution of animals well if a behavior that is influenced by genes increase an individual's fitness, the behavior will tend to spread through a population. This here is talking about <clears throat> social Darwinism, survival of the fittest, right? If that behavior is going to improve life, if it's going to be able to make you survive more, it's only natural to think that it will be passed down more because uh, you will survive longer and be able to reproduce. Over many generations, various kinds of ad adaptive behaviors can play central roles in the survival of populations and uh, species. Um, this is pretty much going on a little bit more into that. Over time, uh, those uh, behaviors are going to be um, circumstantial uh, or, sorry, uh, important into uh, their uh, success, survival. Here you have these school of fish here, how they uh, swim in a school uh, so that way they look bigger and they're able to survive. Um, so that's some behavior that uh, they typically uh, do. You have different types of behavior. Really, we're going to be looking at two or three if you want to break it down that way. First is innate behavior. These are instincts. These are the animal instincts that, that you probably said or mentioned or heard uh, or talked about, something like that. Those animalistic instincts are innate behaviors. All innate behaviors depend on patterns of nervous system activity that develops through complex interactions between genes and the environment. Uh, they enable animals to perform certain tasks essential to survival without the need of any experience. These are uh, this last part here is the, the best way to sum it up. They enable animals to perform certain tasks essential to survival. 
they're af right after they're born it's just something that they know how to do it's more uh, written in their genetic code here okay um, so that's that's more so what's going to be happening so you have the nervous system act, uh, interacting with genetic code here that is going to be um, just you're born with it okay so those an innate behavior is in uh, an instinct an animal instinct um, and that's you're showing that this piglet here is instinct to get milk from the mother pig okay you have uh, what is an innate behavior innate behaviors appear uh, in fully functional form the first time they are performed uh, even though the animal has had no previous experience with the stimuli to which it responds what that's saying is that the first time it uh, acts on this behavior it's going to be in functional form why because it's genetic it's they don't need uh, experience or anything like that because it's written in their DNA an example here is these ducks these ducks are going to follow the mother and it's just instinct to follow the first thing that pretty much moves when it is hatched here you have birds that are going to be asking uh, for uh, food from uh, mother bird as well uh, so I said there's multiple different types of behavior uh, let's talk about another one and that's learned behavior so first off we had innate that's what you're pretty much born with okay those are the animal instincts now we're going to be talking about learned behavior and there's actually four types of learned behavior that we're going to uh, discuss one is habituation okay this uh, the definition of this is it stops or decreases a response to a stimulus uh, that neither harms nor um, that neither harms or rewards them. So pretty much what happens is uh, they are doing some said behavior, uh, and what's going to happen is they stop doing a response to that. And the reason they do that is because it doesn't harm them or it doesn't really reward them. It's kind of neutral. So here you have these birds on the side of the road. Um, if you've ever seen this, a bird on the side of the road, you will see it that um, it will fly away as a car approaches it or so or drives by. But once they understand that it's no longer a threat or anything like that, they won't they won't fly away anymore. So uh, that's what is called a habituation uh, type behavior. Uh, classical conditioning. Uh, this is an important one in psyche, uh, psychology. Um, it's a form of learning in which a certain stimulus comes to produce a particular response, usually through association with a positive or negative experience. Pavlov's dog is a classic example of this. So dogs here, if you look at this picture, you have dogs. Uh, they are Their innate behavior is to salivate at the uh, food. Okay. Then as you train the dogs, the dogs are going to understand you ring the bell, they're going to get fed, and then eventually you ring the bell, they're going to salivate. Okay, uh, so it's understanding that food, they're going to salivate, you ring the bell, they don't know, but they understand that when you ring the bell, it's feeding time, and then they're going to they're going to link that or learn that the bell is going to mean food, so you can ring the bell and they start to salivate before. So that is what that is going to uh, be an example of what is called classical Conditioning. The third one is operant conditioning is learned behavior through repeated practice to earn a reward or avoid punishment. Here you have a mouse here. here you have what is called Skinner's box. This is a kind of a trial by error uh, type learning. Uh, you're going to uh, push a lever, food comes out. Okay. Uh, or you have kind of these, they do these a lot in mouse with with mazes and things like that and go in certain ways and, and whatnot that's that trial by error but uh, the animals will understand once you push that that lever you're going to get some sort of um, reward there so they're going to do it more and more eventually then you have insight learning it's a little bit more complex uh, 
It occurs when an animal applies something it has already learned to a new situation without a period of trial and error. Uh, so here you have an example of the uh, this monkey, uh, chimpanzee, you have bananas that are hanging up, um, and you have a chimpanzee that can't reach it. So what is it going to do? It's going to build this uh, platform in order to reach it. Uh, here's an example as well, a new math problem. Uh, that you have in your uh, on a test and what you're going to use is you're going to use the old principles of how to solve that problem and apply it to that problem and uh, get the answer so that's the insight learning is you're bringing something into uh, the the behavior then a third if you want to uh, call it a third it's really just a combination of innate and learned behaviors uh, that's called complex behaviors. Uh, many complex behaviors combine innate behavior with learning. Okay, uh, Birds have the ability to locate own species and separate their songs from others. So here you have birds that are singing to each other. Um, that, uh, you know, certain birds can, certain songs are going to attract certain birds. So that, uh, what's that saying is that it's a complex because not only do you have to be able to identify and uh, understand what species the bird is uh, of and that that song so now uh, you get kind of both innate and learned uh, behavior uh, now this is amongst you know the, the ecosystem and population and things like that uh, other birds exist now if it was just these two birds that wouldn't be a problem it'd be easy that wouldn't be a complex behavior that'd be more of an innate behavior um, imprinting here you have what is imprinting It's pretty much you're going to follow uh, some sort of older you know mentor or something like that in, in the animal kingdom usually it's your mother okay um, and what you're going to do is you're going to learn all of those behaviors through watching them okay humans do it all the time uh, we act and uh, talk and uh, learn uh, through our our parents they're the ones that take care of us and that's pretty much what is happening here is you have these little duckies are going to be hatched and they're going to attach to the mother duck and learn through just pretty much watching and following uh, so that's what that uh, imprinting is as you pretty much recognize and follows the first thing that it sees or feels uh, and then that behavior will become fixed so that's 29.1. We'll talk 29.2 uh, where we're going to be doing a little bit more about environment uh, into behavior. Thank you for tuning in.